Hello, welcome to watch our video. In this video, I will talk about a popular knowledge in the field of MRI, that is parallel imaging. If you are learning about MRI, you are more or less likely to have heard this phrase and you may be confused on what parallel imaging is and why it is useful. I hope you will get a better understanding of this concept after watching this video. To know what parallel imaging is, first you should know what a real MRI coil looks like. Actually, every MRI scanner has specialized coils for different parts of the body, which is used to either transmit RF pulse or receive the MRI signals. Look at this picture of a typical head coil. Notice I label this picture as a 32 channel head coil. What does the channel here mean? Simply, it means there are as many as 32 small circuit loops inside the whole coil. They work together to give us an MRI image. But in fact, each of these coils can acquire a complete image. So why do we need so many coils? One short answer is because MRI signals are always corrupted by noise and the signal to noise ratio or SNR is relatively low. Let's look at these two images. You can easily find the difference. The right one is noisier than the left one. So we would definitely prefer the left. Actually, these two images are the same image but with different SNR level. What I did is adding Gaussian white noise to the left image to get the noisy one. Gaussian noise is the most common noise in MR images. To improve the quality of image, the simplest way is to average. For example, you can repeat acquiring this image and then average across them. Then you can get a better image with higher SNR. However, if you have only one coil, you'll have to repeat acquisition process to get those extra images, and thus you will need more time. This is not very efficient. In practice, we always want the scan time to be as short as possible. Here, with the help of those combined multiple coils, we can get multiple images at the same time. Their combination can improve the SNR of the image by a lot. And this is actually the original motivation of building such multi-channel receiver coils. Now, let's take a closer look at the image of each channel. Suppose this is the object we are going to image, and we have four coils placed like this, one on top, bottom, left, and right. Here are what these coils will get. Notice that some images are bright on one side and dark in the others. This is because different coils are located in different positions relative to the object, and each of the coils has its effective detecting field. It's just like you take a picture of a person from different side and you will get a different view. Although each of the images show the complete object, we still want to combine them to get an image that better represents the object. There are many ways to do the combination. The easiest way is called sum of squares, which means adding together the squares of the coil images. This is a commonly used combination method in the real scanners. We can see the reconstructed image combines the advantage of the four images, although there is still some darkness at the corner. This is because in this example, I have no coils placed at these places. However, in real cases, the coils are carefully designed so that they can well cover the object and get a good image. Now you have learned what's the use of these multiple coils. Parallel imaging is just based on that. We know that all MRI acquisition is about filling the case space. No matter what trajectory you are using, you have to get the full case space to get an image. However, if you skip some parts of the case space, and you will get a partial case space, but you can reduce the total scan time. For example, if you scan every three lines of the case space, the total scan time will be reduced to one third. Here, we define a number called acceleration factor to describe how much we skipped in the case space. And if you skip more, you can be even faster. But here's the trade-off. With a full case space, you can get the original image. But if you skip the lines in the case space, there will be aliasing in the image. 
the number of aliasing will depend on how many lines you skip. So how can we use such aliased images? Well, this is exactly what the core of parallel imaging is. We undersample the case space and parallel imaging can help us reconstruct the original image by using information from all these coils. In this way, we can use shorter scan time to get an image with reasonable quality. There are many parallel imaging techniques. The most commonly used are SANS and GRAPA. And based on these two, there are another method called simultaneous multi-slice. Next, I will introduce these methods. SANS, its full name is sensitivity encoding. As its name implies, it uses information of sensitivity of the coils to reconstruct the image. Remember, since we have placed the coils in different locations, the image they acquire will be different. For example, the coil on the left will be better at acquiring signals from the left part of the object. We can use this image to get a separate image called the sensitivity map. The sensitivity maps describe where this coil can acquire more signal at the whole field of view. Now let's look again at this aliased image. If we only take the center of the image, we can see it actually contains all the parts of the object, though they are overlapped with each other. Notice, even in the aliased image, it still contains the sensitivity information from the whole field. So, we can just use the center part of the image in the reconstruction. Now, let's consider how these aliased images are formed. Although they look aliased, they are actually combined of three parts. These three parts lay on each other and form these aliased images. Here, we can also separate the sensitivity map into three parts accordingly. The aliased images are then formed by two steps. First, multiply each part of the sensitivity maps and the corresponding part of the image, and then add three parts together for each coil. This will make the aliased images for each of the coils. Now, we have already known the components of these images. The next step is just to reverse the step and get back the unaliased image. By doing a process of matrix inversion on sensitivity maps, we can get new maps called the weights. These weights describe the contribution of each coil on the final image. After we get the weights, the reconstruction is just like how the aliased images are formed. First, we multiply the weights and aliased the image. Notice, we have three parts of the weights. We can combine them and get back to one image. After we multiply the weights and the aliased images of the four coils, we can add them together and get back the unaliased image. Here is a quick summary of sense reconstruction steps. First, we acquire partial case space by skipping lines in the case space and we will get an aliased image for each of the coils. We separately acquire the sensitivity maps of each coil, use them to calculate the weights, multiply with the aliased image, and add them together. We can get back to our original image. Next, let's talk about another method called GRAPA. Its full name is Generalized Auto-Calibrating Parallel Acquisition. The idea behind this method is quite different from that of SENSE. It doesn't use sensitivity information to reconstruct the image, but it works by filling the missing points in the case space. This step is just like filling a Sudoku where you have parts of the known information and you try to fill the missing numbers with the rule and known information. In this way, we can get the complete case space and our images are no longer aliased. In order to fill these missing points, we will need to observe what's the rule between these known points and unknown points. Here, we will acquire part of the full case space called the Auto Calibration Signal, or ACS, to help us find this rule. This fully sampled case space can be acquired along with the accelerated case space or in a separate scan. After we acquire this ACS signal for each of the coils, we can use some mathematical operation to find the best rule to fit these missing points for the rest of the case space, and we define this rule as a weight matrix. 
Notice this relationship between known points is across the coils, so the actual shape of the weight should be a cube, where the third dimension is the coil. Now, we have acquired a weight, we can just slide this weight across the k-space and get the missing points in the partial k-space. This step is just like an assembly line. After we fill the full k-space, the rest steps are just like regular image reconstruction, we will take the inverse Fourier transform to get the original image. Here is a quick summary of the Grappa method. Similarly, we first acquired a partial case space. We need another fully sampled case space called octal calibration signal to help us find the row between existing points and missing points. Then we use this row to fill those missing points and estimate the complete case space. Then we can reconstruct the unaliased images for each coil and combine them to get the reconstructed image. Now we have learned about basic ideas of sense and grappa. Let's look at another popular parallel imaging technique called simultaneous multi-slice. In this method, we no longer skip the lines in the case space, but we excite several slices at the same time. In this way, instead of only getting one slice for each case space, we can get several slices at the same time. However, these slices are also alias, and this happens in the Z direction. This makes it hard to separate the slices because in our scanners, there are usually only few components in the Z direction. One clever way to solve this is to add a face in each of the slices during the readout. If you are familiar with the rule of Fourier transform, you will know this is making an image shift in the face encoding direction, and in this way, the alias becomes spread along the y direction. This will make it easier to separate these slices, and you can reconstruct the image of each slice by either sense or grappa or other methods. Okay, here are some take-home messages. Parallel imaging takes advantage of known coil information to reduce scan time and improve SNR. There are many strategies of accelerated acquisition, and reconstruction is still a field of research. More coils will give you more flexibility of acceleration, but it may depend on the power of computer processing. Thanks for watching this video.